Stephen A. Smith has sparked significant online discussion with his recent remarks about President Joe Biden's decision to pardon his son, Hunter Biden. Smith criticized the move, pointing out a contradiction in Biden's initial stance that he wouldn't use his power to protect his family from legal scrutiny. Because when you look at Donald Trump and how the Democrats went after him, you do understand that the Democrats are no longer in a position to say anything, right? You can talk till the cows come home. You whistling into the wind. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say right now. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about your party. Because when you pardon your son, going back on your word, telling the American people there was no way that you were going to pardon him when everybody in their grandmama knew you were lying but didn't hold you accountable for it. And now you've confirmed what people believe that you were probably gonna be lying about that very thing that you said you wouldn't do for your son. All you had to do was say, he's my son. I can't let him go to jail. What's the matter with y'all? Do I gotta act like Dana Carvey from Saturday Night Live? And another thing, and by the way, is that what I gotta do? All you had to do was say, that's my son. I'm not sending him to jail. I have the power to pardon him and to bring him home with me when I walk away from the White House, ending my political career. I'm taking my son home with me. Everybody would understand that. That wasn't good enough for you. Wasn't good enough for you. Instead, you had to try to come across like he was victimized because of you, like you're so innocent, like you're such a paragon of virtue. And as a result, now you've brought more skepticism in the direction of the Democratic Party. Why? Because you show you're no different than the other side, which you were accusing of everything. Y'all went after Donald Trump for everything but tying his shoelaces on, on the right way. You raked them through the coals. You threw him under the bus. You did everything to him. And I'm in no way trying to act like he's some innocent bystander in all of this. But when the word hypocrisy comes up, there's no escaping it. There's no escaping it. He expressed frustration, suggesting the president should have simply admitted Hunter was his son and taken a more direct approach rather than portraying him as a victim. The controversy stems from Hunter Biden's legal troubles, which have been the subject of national debate for some time. Critics argue that the pardon might set a concerning precedent about accountability and fairness in the legal system. Supporters, however, see it as a personal decision made by a father to protect his child, which they claim many would do in similar circumstances. The public's reaction has been mixed. Some question whether the same level of criticism would apply if a different political figure had done the same. This has reignited broader conversations about partisanship and the double standards often seen in political commentary. Others have pointed out the stark contrast in how pardons have been used by past presidents, especially when family or close allies were involved. Adding to the heated discussion are those who believe the focus on Hunter Biden's personal issues detracts from more pressing national concerns. They argue that this debate is being amplified disproportionately due to political motivations rather than addressing the broader implications of presidential pardon power. Interestingly, the debate around presidential pardons isn't new. Historically, presidents have used this power in controversial ways. For example, President Gerald Ford's pardon of Richard Nixon post Watergate remains one of the most debated uses of this authority. In more recent years, presidents from both major parties have faced scrutiny for their pardoning decisions. This moment also highlights the personal toll of public office, where familial issues are thrust into the spotlight. Whether you agree or disagree, agree with President Biden's decision, it's clear that such moves invite intense scrutiny and public discourse. As this topic continues to unfold, it serves as another example of how deeply personal decisions made by public figures can spark national conversations about ethics, leadership, and accountability.